I'm here inside a brand new manufacturing facility it is the FCSM LLC, Fuel Cell Systems Manufacturing LLC. It is a partnership between Honda and General Motors. And right next to me is Jay Joseph. He is the vice president at Honda for sustainability and business development, business development, which is so apropos for what we're doing here. Apologize for the hair, by the way. So right behind us, this is the Honda fuel cell. And this is something that's going to go in a light vehicle. This is going to go in the CRV. That's right. That's right. So just a couple of months from now and very soon. Yep. And what this is, this is out of this partnership with GM and Honda. The fuel cells like this that are being manufactured here yes. today at fuel cell systems manufacturing. Yes. Will go into the CRV that's being built in Ohio. Okay. Starting in a couple months. Okay. So it, this is going to leave this facility go to Ohio and become a Honda fuel cell CRV. It'll be the, the primary power source for the fuel cell electric vehicle, yes. And, and then is that, that is different from the Honda Clarity? That is a completely new vehicle. Yeah. It is a completely different vehicle. And this is a new generation of fuel cell. Okay. So you have this new partnership with GM and you're producing things like this. I'm assuming that we'll get more details soon, but this is a better fuel cell than what the Clarity had. This is our next generation of fuel cell. Yes, it's one one generation advanced. It is lighter, it is smaller, it has more power output, and it, it is significantly more reliable than the previous generation. Okay, and so another, better in every way. Better in every way. And you you mentioned something as well. And this isn't between the clarity and this as much, but you talked about there's a big difference in energy density between a fuel cell and a battery electric vehicle. Could you could you speak to that just a little bit more? Sure, yeah, the, the energy density of a fuel cell on a per kilogram basis, uh, hydrogen has about 10 times the energy density relative to a, a lithium ion battery. Now it's a bad comparison in the sense that batteries truly are energy storage, yes. whereas the hydrogen is consumed in a, in a chemical reaction that generates electricity. So right. generation versus storage are a little bit apples and oranges. I mean, truthfully, density... we're saying a battery pack is like the gas tank. And then hydrogen is the hydrogen that's making the electricity directly. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's yeah. Fair. They're, bo they're both gas tanks. But, <laughs> both both but gas tanks, but yeah. used differently. Yeah. 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 This isn't the only application that Honda is going to be using this new fuel cell partnership. This is going to broaden out quite a bit potentially. You mentioned um, stationary. Um, first thing I think of is a generator. That's right. Um, larger, heavier equipment, uh, class A uh, commercial trucks, and even bigger than that. Oh, parts of this is Han is already involved, but parts right. of this is totally new. Parts of it are, are completely new business for us. And we're talking with new potential customers that, that we've never talked with in the past. Uh, stationary energy production is a, you say generator, not so much a portable generator, although that's a, that's a possibility. And I think GM has a, a great example of that uh, for their hydrotech system over here, but also stationary energy backup power systems. We've got a proof of concept using some recycled clarity fuel cells on our Torrance campus, produces uh, 500 kilowatts of, of clean renewable energy uh, using those, those clarity hydrogen fuel cells. Yeah. And that's a backup power system for our data center on our Torrance campus. We will expand exactly that type of application using these new generation of fuel cells across our operations in North America over the next few years. Now, fuel cell component, this is actually just one component of the partnership between General Motors and Honda. You know, you guys have also collaborated uh, with the Altium platform right. and um, indeed some vehicles coming out, uh, the Acura ZDX, the Honda Prologue. Can you give us a better sense of what truly encompasses this partnership between GM and Honda because ultimately fuel cells and EVs, those are two different things. They're really very different businesses. We have a, a partnership in development and manufacturing for the Honda Prologue and the Acura ZDX. Um, and those are, those are vehicle based and those are vehicles that we will provide to our dealers and our dealers will, will sell to customers. Um, that's, that's really the transformation of our ICE business to electrification. So those are the first two modern long range BEVs that we've brought to market. Yeah. Uh, we have many more behind that. Um, we'll have 15 new EVs in the United States by the end of this decade, uh, 30 globally. Wow. So there's, there's a lot more of that coming. But 
the distribution of that is very similar to our existing business. With, of course, the the CRV fuel cell electric vehicle will be very much very similar to that as well. We'll sell it through dealers as as we have. But some of the other applications for hydrogen fuel cell, stationary backup power, stationary prime power, um, class eight trucks, Honda will be acting as a supplier to some of these other companies, and there there will be some B two B type of business there. Sure, uh, sure. That that is new for Honda. But if you look at fuel cell and EVs, at, at, at one level, they almost seem like they're in competition with each other. So how, how, do, the two, how do the two get married? How do they coexist? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the uh, battery electric customer is probably a more traditional customer, and that can be anywhere in the United States. Whereas fuel cell is, a, is more dependent on retail hydrogen distribution. The, bulk of that in the United States today is in California. Yeah. California has invested more in hydrogen infrastructure. Uh, we support that as well. We have a, a partnership and in fact we're investors in a company called First Element Fuel. First Element Fuel is by far the leader of retail hydrogen refueling in, in the United States and in, in uh, California. They've got, they operate two thirds of the, the retail hydrogen stations there. Right. And they're right. continuing to grow and, and build new stations. So. Um, Regionally, fuel cell will be fuel cell vehicles will be a little bit more limited to where there's retail hydrogen available, um, as opposed to electric vehicles, which all they need is a plug, and every household has that. Right, right. But that is that is the interesting uh, interesting uh, similar issues where it does seem like the technology on the manufacturer point of view is is getting ahead of the infrastructure in both applications. EV is farther along than hydrogen, of course, but there's struggles on on that side as well. So, as a company that sells the end product, how do you how do you get involved with kind of nudging the infrastructure along to yeah. keep up with your products? Well, we we're working both sides of that equation, and in yeah. both in both energy domains. So, yeah. for a battery electric, our our dream state is to provide a comprehensive solution for our customers to make their life easier and better through electrification yeah. where it should be thoughtless and effortless for them to be able to charge their vehicle and to get additional value from their vehicle by selling electrons back to a utility yeah, sure. where that makes sure. sense. So we, we see a huge potential to contribute to our customers' lives and value and even their pocketbooks through bi-directional charging at some point in, in the next couple of years. Hydrogen's a little bit different because we don't envision, you know, practical home hydrogen refueling in the in the immediate future. Um, but we we call that the the chicken and egg challenge mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. we have to both generate demand and support the infrastructure. Sure. You know, normally infrastructure follows demand, but we need to work that equation from both sides, and that's why we've invested in First Element Fuels and, and other partners in hydrogen fueling to make sure that the infrastructure is there as we put products in the market and try to generate more demand for them so there's better utilization. Now, I've heard both uh, folks, you yourself and folks on your side and folks on the GM side, talk about how this partnership between you two have gone over really well. And it, and it has been, I suppose, the agreement itself is over a decade old that's right. now. 2013, is 2013, that 2013, that's right, yeah, that's when this began. Do you see, I mean, where do we see this going? Is this? fairly limited, because you guys will, GM and Honda, will stall ultimately compete against each other in both the EV and the fuel cell space. But do you see an expansion of this partnership? Is it at a level where it's gonna be for a while? I mean, how how does this partnership look long-term? That's a that's a topic of ongoing discussion between both companies. It's yeah. in what's the shape of the relationship and what's that shape over time? Yeah. Uh, we're very happy with where it is right now. We say that we are partners in development and competitors in the marketplace. And, yeah. and I think this fuel cell system is a perfect example that we, both companies in a very complementary fashion, brought technology and experience and concepts together to make these fuel cells for both companies and for our customers. That's the starting point of it. But now you already see us going out into the marketplace and competing for different customers. So it's been really, it's been really valuable and, and we've really kept true to our word of partners in development and competitors in the marketplace. Um, and finally, I, I've, I've driven the most recent Honda CRV hybrid. Uh, I, I like Honda's hybrid system. I think if it's a clever way to tackle that particular issue. Um, for the for the CRV fuel cell, we're only a couple months away. 
at a high level, should I be expecting something that is actually quite similar or is this going to be a unique driving experience? It is a little bit different than the than the hybrid. And, and I, I agree, you know, the hybrid is the CRV hybrid is now the most popular powertrain choice for the hybrid. It's more than 50% yep. of sales yep. because yep. it's it's easy and effortless and there's no behavior change involved. Exactly right. You put yep. gas in it and you drive it. You just visit the gas station less frequently because yep. it, it has great fuel economy. The Obviously, the hydrogen fuel cell is a little different in terms of fueling, but um, in terms of the driving experience, it's it's quiet, it's comfortable, it's it's got ample torque. So uh, behind the wheel, you won't even really be aware that it's a different powertrain. Yeah. Well, Jay Joseph, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very, very much. Pleasure. Thank as always, you Robin. mostly for dealing with my hair, and now everyone knows why I wear a hat most of the time. Great to see you, Robin. Great to see you. Thank you.